In this video today, I'm going to share with you guys how I went from 0 to 4 million followers in one year as a crime scene cleaner. So, a little bit different video than my usual content, but I've always wanted to share the story with you guys, and I think you might find it pretty interesting. So let's start out at the beginning. Four years ago, I started working part-time as a crime scene cleaning specialist for this company while I was still in high school just to earn a little bit of extra money. I did that for a little bit over a year, and I still wasn't sure what to do with my life, so I decided to go off to college for a little bit, run a lot while I was there, and then COVID eventually sent me back home cleaning up death scenes yet again. When I was back home from college working, I realized during that time I really didn't love college and I didn't really see a future there for me. So what I decided to do instead was actually double down on my job and see if I could grow the company to any significant size. Growth was pretty slow and I wasn't terribly happy with the results so I decided to try something new. What I did is I took some inspiration from two other creators about my age that were absolutely killing it on social media, literally just filming themselves making Subway sandwiches and ice cream. I thought to myself exactly this, if a Subway sandwich video can get millions of views on the internet, then me showcasing the biohazard cleanup work that I do could also perform pretty well. And so what I ended up doing was I duct taped my phone to my chest, just pretty much like this, and I filmed my first couple of videos that way, and the next day I woke up to like 50,000 followers, over a million views on my videos, it was insane. I was definitely freaking out about this, this was so crazy and fun, but I had to stay focused and keep making videos because I wanted people to think that I was an already well-established creator that's been around for a while. In fact, that was actually part of the plan since the beginning, I wanted people to think that I'd been making videos forever, and so that's why I would literally start my videos with, as you guys know, I clean up crime scenes, making it seem like I've been telling you guys this for years. But when I uploaded that video, I actually had zero audience. I had nothing, but I didn't want you guys to know that, so... And looking back, I really think that helped grow my channel really fast initially, because when people would see my video on the For You page, they would go and click on my profile to learn more, and then they would see a bunch of related similar content, kind of giving them an expectation of what they could see in the future, and a very clear presentation of like what I'm all about, the stuff I do, the content I make, and all that. So I figured if people know what they're getting into, they will probably have a higher chance to go and follow and continue to consume that type of content because they're interested. A lot of people can get a video to go pretty viral, and and it happens every single day, but not a lot of people get a bunch of followers or an actual brand from it. So paying attention to how I built the content library and understanding the user point of view of when they come to my profile, I want it to be crystal clear like what exactly I'm all about and to give them a strong enough reason to come back so they can know exactly what they're getting in the future. So I did that for a couple months. I kept making videos. I hit 1 million followers pretty quickly. I think it literally only took like three months or something like that. It happened pretty fast. I had a couple of videos get 50 million views that summer and actually had one get over 90 million views. It was insane. The funny part about that though was that the videos that went crazy viral for me were the ones that I put like very little effort into or I just sort of did as a joke. And you'll actually hear that from a lot of creators. The least effort they put into a video, the higher chance it has of going crazy viral. And I don't know, maybe that's just how it works. It's, it's kind of funny. So things were growing really quickly for me at the time. It was super fun. During that period, the only income I was earning from social media was the TikTok creator fund, which pays, you know, three cents every thousand views or something like that. It's really nothing compared to what other platforms pay. But I was hitting 50 to 100 million views every single month. And at three cents every thousand views, like I'm probably earning between two or three thousand bucks a month from it. I was like, oh my gosh, I can like pay rent and not have to worry about some groceries. That's awesome. And I was like, holy crap, I could like live off of this money just from social media. So I kept grinding away, growing the account, and then I realized at a certain point that I could probably use this platform to market this company on a national level. This was like my big break moment. I thought I was finally gonna make it with this idea. I thought I was gonna get a whole bunch of new exposure for the company and grow it to a huge size. At this point, I had already been on a bunch of news channels like BuzzFeed, I was getting a lot of coverage. I was on the Anthony Padilla podcast for a bit. So between that and the comments you guys would leave in my videos about how kind and respectful I was of the clients and the people in these positions, I figured it shouldn't take a whole lot of convincing for the corporate executives to like put these ideas in place. What ended up happening was they requested I delete every single one of my videos instead. So you could only imagine the roller coaster of emotion I felt going from viral sensation, trying to get millions of new impressions for this company to all of a sudden deleting every single one of my viral videos one at a time. I was stressing. I can't overstate this enough. I was literally sick to my stomach because what, what I was thinking at the time was my entire future was just getting thrown down the toilet and I couldn't do anything about it. It was especially heartbreaking because every single video I had posted at that point, I had probably 60, 70 videos at this point. Every single one of them had over a million views. I was like pretty well accomplished on social media and I had 
multiple millions of followers on many accounts at this point. And now I'm pretty much starting from scratch with zero content on all platforms. I was really sad at this point and I didn't know what to do with my life or with these platforms, but I knew I couldn't just quit and leave it hanging. I had a bunch of followers to myself. I have to do something. I had to figure out some way I could do like a hard pivot and change the course of whatever was happening right now. So what I did is I made a video announcing to my audience why every single video was gone now and kind of some preliminary ideas of what I could do in the future. I, I honestly, I considered pancake art as like my content at that time. Like I was pretty desperate for anything at this point. I ended up making all the videos you can currently see on my channel today. It was a lot of cleaning tips, stories from my job as a crime scene cleaner, and then a couple of random things I was up to that I thought would be fun to share. I still had my day job. I enjoyed the work and getting to turn people's lives around is still a deeply fulfilling part of the career for me. And so that's why I've been doing it for literally the majority of this year still. Those videos did all right, surprisingly. They weren't getting 4 million views a day like I had been, but it was getting a couple hundred thousand views and that got me really excited for the future. I eventually landed a brand deal earlier this year with literally the coolest sponge company ever. They really helped provide some security for me so I could just put my head down and create some new content. And I would say it helped give me some confidence and encouragement for the value I provide because because previously all my hopes and dreams were just shattered and I felt like I was worthless. So it was cool to see something like that come up. Eventually, I started getting flown out to places for speaking events and podcasts. I previously mentioned I was on the Anthony Pedia podcast and that really helped grow my channel a lot. Actually, during that time, I think my YouTube channel started picking up and I was getting about 100 thousand subscribers every single day so that was pretty exciting then i began collaborating with other local businesses that's been really fun that's some of the content you see on the channel now and now i'm standing in front of over 1 million of you guys just here on youtube literally just primarily sharing stories about my life cleaning up crime scenes with you guys it's absolutely crazy growing this channel with you guys you guys have been there for the entire process it's so fun and so I'm beyond happy that I get to share these stories with you guys, but if I'm being perfectly honest with myself, I, I really think that this channel could be a lot more than just me sharing stories in front of a camera with you guys. So going into the new year, I want you guys to be some of the first people to know where I plan on taking this channel and what I'm doing with it. Basically, I want to follow in the path of some really great creators and provide free home cleanup services for those really struggling with mental health disorders. I believe everyone deserves a clean and healthy home, and I don't want people to physically suffer from their mental health disorder just because they can't afford the service service it requires to clean up their home. And it costs a lot of money to deep clean people's homes, especially at that scale. But I'm really proud to say that there's already some super dope companies that are interested in sponsoring those type of cleanups and covering the cost of it. So my vision so far is to really just collect a bunch of money from these sponsors and then use that money to go and fund these massive cleanup projects for the community. And so I think this really works out great for everyone because one person will be able to get their home entirely cleaned up for free. Two, the sponsor gets to look amazing because they're the ones that are financially responsible for getting the cleanup done. And three, ideally these videos are at least entertaining or informative to, to you guys and you guys enjoy watching them. So, so that's kind of the plan so far. That's kind of how it makes sense in my brain at least. So I have no idea if this is going to work out or not, but I think it'll be at least really fun to try and I'm really going to need your guys' help to get started. So if you or someone you love is struggling with hoarding disorder or just keeping their home clean, please reach out to me, email me, DM me on Instagram, do whatever you guys got to do to like get in contact with me because I want to help. So let's flood that inbox, baby. Let's go.